Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 25 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover list comprehensions, generator functions, and generator expressions. And they are all very cool. Specifically, list comprehensions are going to execute an expression against an iterable, which I covered in the last video. And I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so while they are super powerful, try not to make list comprehensions that hard to figure out for others. I'm going to give you some examples here of some of the awesome things you can do with them, though. So I'm going to say list map. And what this is going to do is multiply two times every value with a map. So I'm going to say map and then lambda. If you didn't watch the lambda tutorial, definitely watch that first as well as long as well as the iterable one, which is the one that precedes this. So I'll go like this. There we go, and boom! You can see how we calculated that. Now we'll get a little bit more complicated. Now this is specifically how we would do the same thing with a list comprehension. We would say print, and note that I'm using brackets here when I'm working with list comprehensions. So I'll say 2x, 4x in range 1 through 11. So you can see, did exactly the same thing in less code. All right, or definitely looks a little bit neater there. So let's say we would like to construct a list of odds using filter. We could say print list filter lambda x x modulus 2 not equal to 0 and then say range 1 through 11 and then do the same thing with the list comprehension print again x 4 x in range 1 through 11 if x modulus 2 not equal to 0. So again, you can see less code gets exactly the same results. So basically, a list comprehension can act as a map as well as a filter all on one line. So now let's use one to generate a list of 50 values and then take them to the power of 2 and then return all that are multiples of 8. Sounds extremely complicated. I can do it in one line of code. So I'm going to say i power of 2 for i in range 50 if i modulus 8 is equal to 0. So that really complicated thing, one line of code. All right? Super, super powerful. A little confusing, though, if you haven't used them a lot. Another thing you can do is you can have multiple for loops as well as be able to multiply all values in one list times all values in another. So we could do something like print x times y for x in range 1 through 3 for y in range 11 to 16. Boom. All right. So pretty crazy, crazy stuff. Let's do some more. You can actually put list comprehensions in list comprehensions. So let's say we want to generate a list of 10 values, multiply them by 2, and return multiples of 8. How would we do that? Well, we could say print x for x in i times 2 for i in range 10 go outside of that comprehension if x modulus 8 is equal to 0 whoops I see what I did wrong change that to I now run it boom there you go so you can see you can do really complicated things with list comprehensions play around with them that's the only way you can really get very good at them and now I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that because I'm going to ask you to solve a new problem. All right, so what I want you to do is to generate a list of 50 random values using all the notes that you have accumulated so far in this tutorial. 
So generate a list of 50 random values between 1 and 1000 and return those that are multiples of 9. Now to do so, you have to use a list comprehension in a list comprehension. So this is a tough one. So pause your video and give it a try, otherwise I'm going to solve it right now. So I said random, so you're going to need to import the random module. And how we're going to do this is, there's a list comprehension. I'm going to say x for x in random random int 1 through 1001 for i in range 50 if x modulus 9 is equal to 0. Run it. Boom. There you go. There is your answer. All right, so if you didn't get that, definitely don't feel bad about it. A little bit complicated since you are new to list comprehensions, but good for you for giving it a try. And if you got it right, fantastic. Another thing list comprehensions are good with is list comprehensions also make it easy to work with multi-dimensional lists. So let's create one. So I'm going to have multi-list is equal to, and I'm going to go one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and then finally seven, eight, and nine. And I can easily come in now and say print column one, four, column in multi-list. Boom, and there you go. Went and printed everything in this column right here. You would also be able to get the diagonal by incrementing from zeros to ones to twos. So we could come in and say print like this, multi-list, and then say i, and then i for the two parts of the multi-dimensional uh, or list for i in range, and we could say length of our multi-list. And there you can see it went and printed one, five, and nine, one, five, and nine. All right, so neat stuff, and now I want to talk about generator functions. So a generator function is going to return a result generator whenever it's called, and they can be suspended and resumed during execution of your program to create results over time rather than all at once. And we use generators when we want a huge result set, but we don't want to slow down the program by creating it all at one time. So what I'm going to do here is I'll create a generator that's going to calculate primes and return the next prime on command. So I'm going to say define is prime number and then I can create a for loop I and this for loop is going to cycle through primes from two to the value to check. So I'm going to say for I in range two through num and we know that if any division has no remainder, we know it isn't a prime number. So I'll say if num, and yes, I'm aware that there's other ways of calculating prime. I'm just doing the most straightforward way here. So return false, and otherwise return true. All right, so this is a generator, and I'm going to say max number and this for loop is going to cycle through primes from 2 to the maximum value requested so I'll say for num1 in range 2 to the max number whoops max number and I'll say if is prime and pass in num1 and then I will type yield num1 and yield is what makes this a generator. When called by next, it will return the next result for us. So I want to create a reference to the generator. So I'm going to call this prime is equal to gen prime. Let's call this gen primes. Works, sounds a little bit better. And I'm going to say the maximum is 50. And then I just call next for each result. So print and prime. next 
prime and you can see it gave us three and then each time I call it it's gonna give us the next value so I can throw a whole bunch in there run it and you see that it generates all those prime values alright so cool stuff and to finish off this tutorial I am now gonna talk about generator expressions alright so generator expressions look just like list comprehensions but they return results once at a time and they are also surrounded by the brackets just like we did with list comprehension so let's create double x times 2 4 x in range 10 then I can say print double and next double and we can go and grab this and paste that inside of there and you can see that I was able to generate those values and you're also going to be able to iterate through all the results as well so you could say something like for nom in double and print num and you can generate all those values all right so cool stuff and that is going to be it for now in the next tutorial it's going to be a big one and we're going to focus in on threads so like always please leave your questions and comments below otherwise